Hey everyone, hilltop towns are as close as you're gonna get to stepping into a fairy tale. With amazing views from the top and histories that reach back through the centuries, I'm counting down the 15 most spectacular hilltop towns. Let's start with number 15, Mont Saint Michel in France. Mont Saint Michel, a tidal island and commune in Normandy, France, stands as a marvel of medieval architecture. It's located just over a mile off France's northwestern coast at the mouth of the Cousinon River. It covers an area of about 7 hectares and rises dramatically from the bay. Its position made it accessible to pilgrims at low tide and defensible against invaders. The island's abbey, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1979, attracts over 3 million people annually. Now, the Romanesque church here at its heart was designed by William of Volipiano in the 11th century, with its impressive structure supported by underground crypts and chapels. In the 12th century, it was fortified, and the building added main facade of the church. The Gothic style was introduced after a destructive fire in 1274. Its landscape, shaped by rising sea levels and erosion, features granite outcrops that have resisted the ocean. The fortifications were further enhanced by Charles VI, who added towers, courtyards, and strengthened the ramparts. Today, it remains a vibrant community, with tourism as its primary economic driver, generating substantial revenue from the millions of visitors. This unique blend of natural resilience, architectural ingenuity, and historical significance makes this place an enduring symbol of French heritage. Despite its small permanent population, though, the island thrives as a tourist destination, its numerous shops and the nightly presence of monks and a few residents maintaining this hilltop town withstand not just the test of time, but the tides too. Number 14. Motovun, Croatia Motovun, a village and municipality in central Istria in Croatia, stands about 890 feet above sea level, offering views and a rich historical tapestry. Its origins trace back to ancient times when the Celts and Illyrians built fortresses on this hill, giving the village its name, derived from the Celtic word Montona, meaning a town in the hills. The Paranzana, a narrow-gauge railway operated from 1902 to 1935, once passed below the town, marking an important phase in its history. In the 10th and 11th centuries, it belonged to the Bishop of Porek before being taken over by Venice in 1278. Now, its architecture is showcasing a blend of Romanesque, Gothic, and Renaissance styles evident in its tower, city gates, and internal and external fortifications. The late Renaissance Church of St. Stephen, constructed in the early 17th century and likely designed by renowned architect Andrea Palladio, contains remarkable artworks, including marble statues by Francesco Bonazzo and 17th century painting of the Last Supper by an unknown Venetian artist. Motovon is also celebrated in Istrian culture as the home of Vele Jose, a gentle giant from the stories by nationalist writer Vladimir Nazor. This character, rooted in local folklore, symbolizes the Croatian struggle for equality with the potentially dominant German and Italian communities in the early 20th century. Number 13. San Gimignano, Italy San Gimignano, a small, walled medieval hill town in Tuscany's Siena province, is renowned for its well-preserved medieval architecture. It's known as the Town of Fine Towers. It offers a remarkable glimpse into the past with its array of Romanesque and Gothic structures. Its historic center is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which features notable secular buildings and churches like the Palazzo Comunale, the Collegiate Church, and the Church of Sant'Agostino, all adorned with frescoes from the 14th and 15th centuries. San Gimignano is also celebrated for its saffron, golden ham, pecorino cheese, and a unique white wine produced from the ancient grapes grown on local sandstone hillsides. Encircled by three layers of walls, the town's layout includes eight entrances set into the second wall from the 12th and 13th centuries. The main thoroughfares, Via San Matteo and Via San Giovanni, traverse from the north to the south, and at the heart of this are four central squares, some of which date back to the 1300s. It also has a wealth of Romanesque and Gothic architecture, including medieval fortifications and distinct domestic buildings. Now, Romanesque structures are marked by round arches, while Gothic buildings feature pointed arches, both often displaying bifurcate windows. A distinctive architectural trait from the Siena region is the use of depressed arches over doorways, sometimes with a secondary arch beneath. Civic buildings like the communal palace house galleries with works by notable artists. Number 12. Oya, Santorini, Greece 
Oya, a charming village on the islands of Thera and Thracia in the Cyclades, Greece, is a picturesque destination known for its views and unique architecture. Since the 2011 local government reform, Oya has been part of the municipality of Santorini, covering the entire island of Thracia and the northwestern part of Santorini. The village has a population of just over a thousand people as of 2021 census, and it spans an area of just over 19 square kilometers. Now, historically, it's known as Apanomerium. Oya's economic prosperity peaked in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, driven by its merchant fleet that traded extensively in the Eastern Med. Oya is perched on the slopes of the caldera, featuring narrow passageways and a central square. This village is famous for its whitewashed buildings, blue domed churches, and traditional cycladic houses carved into the rock. This unique architecture includes two-story captain's houses, which is an example of the village's affluent past, partially destroyed by the 1956 earthquake, but still impressive. The main street winds through the village, providing a scenic trek along the caldera's edge. This cobbled path is a popular route for visitors exploring the village's narrow, often congested passageways. Its elevated position at about 500 feet above sea level offers a panoramic view of the Palia and Nea Kameni volcanoes on the island of Thracia, earning it the nickname Eagle's Nest. Number 11. Aze, France Aze is a scenic seaside commune on the French Riviera. It lies between Nice and Monaco. It stretches from the Mediterranean Sea to a medieval village perched atop a hill. This area was first inhabited around 200 BC near Mount Bastide. Notable historical finds include ancient Greek silver filet from the 3rd century BC, now in the British Museum. Over time, the area saw Roman and Moorish occupations with the Moors driven out by William of Provence in 973. In 1388, the House of Savoy fortified it due to its strategic location near Nice. The village has faced various sieges, including those by the French and Turkish troops in 1543 and the destruction of its walls by Louis XIV in 1706. Aze became part of France in April of 1860 by popular vote. The village sits about 1,400 feet above sea level, offering views of the Med. The light ochre church, built in 1764, is visible from afar, and inside an Egyptian cross hints at the village's ancient roots, possibly linked to a Phoenician temple dedicated to Isis. Aze is known for its breathtaking sea views, particularly from the Jardin Botanique des Aze, which features a collection of cacti and succulents. Walt Disney was among its notable visitors. The village's oldest building, a chapel, dates back to 1306 and served the white penitents of Aze during the plague outbreaks. The village's past is evident in the bell turret's design and should make perfect sense that it's an incredibly popular tourist destination. Number 10. Medina, Malta Medina is a fortified city in the northern region of Malta. It served as the island's capital from antiquity until the medieval period. The city, with a population of about 250, is still confined within its walls and is contiguous with the town of Rabat, which has over 11,000 residents as of March 2014. Medina dates back to prehistory, with evidence of habitation in the area known since around ancient times, around the 8th century BC. The Phoenicians established a colony known as An, which shared its name with the island and likely served as its capital. The Romans took control during the Punic Wars, renaming the city Melita, a name derived from the Greek and Latin names for the island. Greco-Roman Melita was significantly larger than present-day Medina, but its size was reduced during the Byzantine or Arab rule. After a massacre in the 9th century, the area was largely abandoned until it was re-established in the 11th century as Medina, from which its current name is derived. Medina continues as Malta's capital under the Order of St. John, who arrived in 1530 and shifted the capital to Burgu. The city experienced a decline, but saw a revival in the early 18th century with the construction of several Baroque buildings. Notable landmarks in Medina include the Domus Romana, where the ruins of Roman-era houses contain well-preserved mosaics, statues, and other artifacts. An extensive restoration of Medina's city walls was completed between 2008 and 2016. The city features a mix of Norman and Baroque architecture, including several palaces that serve as private homes, many of which are handed down every generation. Number 9. Civita di Bagno Reggio Civita di Bagno Reggio is an outlying village in the commune of Bagno Reggio, in the province of Viterbo in central Italy. It's situated about a half mile east of the town and about 75 miles north of Rome. 
The village is accessible only by a footbridge from a nearby town with a toll introduced in 2013. As a result of this toll, communal taxes were abolished in Chivita and Baño Regio due to its unstable foundation, which frequently erodes. It's also famously known as the Dying City. The region's morphology is shaped by erosion and landslides, and the territory consists of two different rock formations. The older formation is clay, originating from the sea and forming the base layer, which is particularly prone to erosion. The upper layers consist of tuff and lava material, but rapid erosion is caused by streams and atmospheric agents and deforestation. It's inhabited by only 16 people, and it's situated in a remote area, and is reachable only by a reinforced concrete pedestrian bridge built in 1995. Now, while this bridge is generally restricted to pedestrians, residents and workers are allowed to cross by bike or motorcycle at specific times. The village's isolation is due to the progressive erosion of the hill and the nearby valley, which creates badlands. This ongoing erosion poses a threat to the village's existence, earning it the nickname the Dying Town. Number 8. Hallstatt, Austria Hallstatt is a small town in the district of Gemunden in the Austrian state of Upper Austria. It's situated between the southwestern shore of the Hallstatter Sea and the steep slopes of the Dachstein Massif. The town lies on the national road connecting Salzburg and Graz. Hallstatt is renowned for its ancient salt production dating back to prehistoric times, which gave its name to the Hallstatt culture. This archaeological culture is associated with the Proto-Celtic and Early Celtic people of the Early Iron Age in Europe around 800 to 450 BC. Hallstatt is the heart of the cultural landscape, which was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997. The town has since become an example of over-tourism due to its popularity. Until the late 19th century, it could only be reached by boat or narrow trails, and the land between the lake and mountains was limited, and the town made use of every available space. Access between houses along the riverbank was by boat or via an upper path, a small corridor passing through the attics. The first road to Hallstatt was constructed in 1890 along the western shore, partially by blasting through the rock. It is one of the earliest places of human settlement thanks to its abundant natural salt resources, which have been mined for thousands of years. Originally, the salt was extracted using antler picks, giving the mined salt its heart-shaped form. The mine also just happens to be the oldest working salt mine in the world. Moving on to number 7, Bad Gastein, Austria. Bad Gastein, a spa town in the St. Johann im Pangau district of Austria, is beautifully situated in the high valley of the Hohe Tauern mountain range. It's known for its amazing views and waterfall and its grand hotel buildings. Bad Gastein travels along the upper Gastein valley following the Gastein Achik Creek. This valley divides the Ankogel group to the east from the Goldberg group to the west in the Hohe Tauhern range. The town center is positioned at the waterfall, approximately 3,300 feet above sea level. Now, this remote valley was initially settled by Bavarian peasants in the 9th century, with some southern parts also showing signs of Slavic settlement. Gastein, first mentioned as Gastana in 963, was part of the German Stem Duchy of Bavaria, and initially known for alpine farming and gold mining. In 1297, Duke Otto III and his brother Stephen I sold it to the Archbishop of Salzburg due to heavy debts. The spas of Bad Gastein were visited by notable figures like Holy Roman Emperor Frederick III and Renaissance physician Paracelsus. The town's name, Bad, means spa, highlighting its history as a health resort. By the 18th century, the hot springs, also known as the Wildebad, became a popular spa destination. Oddly enough, Bad Gastein is also known for its winter sports. It hosted the 1958 World Championships in Alpine Skiing and regularly features the Snowboarding and Border Cross World Cup. The ski resort, part of the larger ski network, offers 125 miles of downhill slopes across four ski areas in the Gastein Valley. Number 6. Zahara, Spain Zahara de la Sierra is a picturesque municipality in the province of Cadiz, nestled in the hills of Andalusia in northern Spain. It's perched atop a mountain, and it offers amazing views of a valley and a man-made lake formed by a dam, which must be crossed to access the town. Zahara de la Sierra is known as one of the Pueblos Blancos, or White Towns, due to its predominantly white buildings. Historically, the town served as a Moorish outpost, strategically positioned between Ronda and Seville, making it an ideal location for a castle to function. The remains of this Moorish castle are still standing today. 
Sahara de la Sierra was under Arab rule until 1407, briefly recaptured by the Emirate of Granada in 1481, which led to the Castile's war against Granada. Castilian troops led by Rodrigo Ponce de Leon, Duke of Cadiz, finally captured it in 1483. The town is a gateway to nature in its purest forms. Situated within a national park, a UNESCO biosphere reserve, this area is rich with caves, grottos, and gorges. Various routes lead to natural monuments such as the Garganta Verde, located just four miles from Zahara. Within the municipality, nature offers more unique spectacles such as the Spanish fir forest in the town center. This forest, dating back to the Quartenary period, have survived to the present day, coexisting with strawberry trees and home oaks, enriching the landscape and purifying the air. The area is crisscrossed with trails and routes, inviting exploration. As walkers traverse these paths, they might encounter dormies, weasels, and golden foxes hiding in their dens. Lizards and snakes lurk in the underbrush while eagles and vultures soar above. Along the riverbanks and streams, crabs and salamanders thrive, and the waterways here are home to trout and barbels. Number 5. Orvieto, Italy Orvieto is a city and commune in the province of Terni, which is located in western Umbria in Italy. The city sits atop a flat summit of a large butte made of volcanic tuff, rising above the nearly vertical tuff cliffs that are further fortified by defensive walls built from the same stone. This ancient city has been inhabited since Etruscan times. Orvieto is often associated with Etruscan Velsna, although some modern scholars disagree. It was undoubtedly a significant center of Etruscan civilization. The city's archaeological museum, Museo Claudio Fania e Museo Civico, houses numerous Etruscan artifacts in the area, and one notable discovery from the Oroveto necropolis is a tomb with the inscription, Miaveles Catexinas, meaning I am Avil of Catexina. This inscription indicates the tomb's occupant had an Etruscan Latin first name, Alus, and a Celtic-derived family name, suggesting complex and peaceful ethnic relations in ancient Italy. The city, perched on its impregnable rock, controlled crucial roads between Florence and Rome, where it crossed the Chiana River. By the end of the 13th century, it was a large town with a population of around 30,000. Oroveto governed itself through a podesta, often the bishop, acting alongside a military governor or the captain of the people. The 13th century saw the city at its peak of wealth, but frequently in conflict with the papacy, even coming under interdiction. Pope Urban IV stayed in Oroveto from 1262 to 1264. Beneath the city lies a labyrinth of over 12,000 tunnels, galleries, wells, stairs, quarries, cellars, passageways, cisterns, and superimposed rooms with niches for pigeon roosts, all carved into the tough rock. These tunnels, initially dug for practical reasons, were also used by noble families as secret escape routes during sieges. Number 4. Monsaras, Portugal Monsaras is a civil parish in the municipality of Rugenos de Monsaras, situated right on the bank of the Guadiana River. In 2011, its population was 782, covering an area of approximately 34 square miles. The hilltop of Monsaras has always been of strategic importance due to its prominent position and proximity to the Deep Valley. This area has been in continuous occupation since prehistoric times, with evidence of habitation including hundreds of megalithic monuments. The hill on which Monsaras is located was originally a prehistoric fortification known as a castro, which served as a basis for pre-Roman occupation funerary temples. During the Roman occupation, Monsaras was reorganized and it was subsequently occupied by various groups, including the Visigoths, the Arabs, Mozarabs, Jews, and Christians loyal to Alfonso Henrique after the Reconquista. In the 8th century, Arab forces occupied Monsaras, renaming it Saris or Sarish under the control of the Taifa of Badajoz. The name Monsaras is derived from the word Zares or Zeres, the Iberian transliteration of the Arabic Sarish or Sarish referring to the gum rock rose, a plant that thrives in the dry acidic soil. In 1167, the castle was taken by Geraldo San Pervor during an expedition from Evora, which had recently been retaken. However, after defeat, Monsaras fell back into Muslim hands. In 1232, King Sancho II, with the support of the Knights Templar, definitively retook the citadel and the town, placing it under Templar control. The Christian repopulation of Monsaras concluded around the reign of Alfonso III, when the knight Martim Anas was appointed a leadership role. 
After the Portuguese Interregnum, which lasted from 1383 to 1385, Monsaraz became part of the House of Braganza under Nuvo Alvarez Pereira. By 1412, it was inherited by his son Fernando, becoming one of the most valuable assets in the Ducal Estates. In 1512, King Manuel of Portugal issued his royal approval to Monsaraz, reformulating the public and jurisdictional administration of the municipality and setting the stage for what we see today. Number 3. Le Beau du Provence Village, France Le Beau du Provence is a rural commune located in the Beauche du Rhone department in the Provence Alps Côte d'Azur region of southern France. The village is perched atop a rocky outcrop in the mountains northeast of Arles and is crowned with a ruined castle overlooking the southern plains. Its name, Le Beau, derives from the provincial word Beauche, meaning rocky spur. The term bauxite for aluminum ore was coined after geologist Pierre Berthier discovered the ore here in 1821. Until August 1958, the commune was officially known as La Beau. While renowned for its historical significance and picturesque beauty, this place attracts over 1.5 million people annually, only though about 20 residents live in the upper part of the commune. The strategic location here has made it an attractive site for habitation since prehistoric times, with traces of habitation dating all the way back to 6000 BC. The Costa Pera Cave, discovered in 1928, contains a collective of burial grounds from the Early Bronze Age. The site was used by the Celts as a fort around the 2nd century BC, with peripheral areas developing early. During the Middle Ages, the stronghold of a feudal domain covering 79 towns and villages, this was a fortress constructed from the 11th to 13th century, spans seven hectares. Le Beau de Provence is situated in the foothills of the Epirs within the National Park, approximately 13.7 miles south of Avignon and 9.5 miles northeast of Arles. The commune can be accessed via the D27 road in the south, which passes through the village and continues north to join the D99 east. Other roads, such as the D5 and D27A, also connect to neighboring areas. Number 2. Gord, France Gord is a stunning hilltop commune located in the Valclus department in the Côte d'Azur region in southeastern France. Residents here are known as Gordians. Nearby major cities include Avignon, with smaller cities such as Cavaillon and Apt also close in proximity. Gord spans a series of mountains and hills and extends into the Calavon Valley, also referred to as the Luberon Valley. It covers over 4,800 hectares, and it's one of the largest communes in the area. The northern part includes the southern edge of the Valclus Mountains, with the highest point at about 2,100 feet. The southern part of the commune features the Calavon Valley and several hills, with the lowest elevation at just about 365 feet in the plain. Roman occupation left a significant mark on the area, evident from the Roman road connecting Apt and Carpentra, and various Gallo-Roman remains such as those found in the Boost district and the substructures of the hamlet of Le Gros. After World War II, it began attracting visitors like Marc Chagall and Jean de Rolle, who brought friends such as Sergei Polakov, Victor Vasserly, and Jean de Wans to the village. The nearby abbey and village, a village of dry stone huts now serving as a museum, are significant attractions too. The area also includes several ancient hamlets named after local families or their activities, such as Les Imbert, Les Gros, and Les Martins. The largest hamlet, Les Imbert, features an 18th century church and various 18th century architectural details. Tourism plays a huge role here in the Gord's economy, with numerous hotels, bed and breakfasts, seasonal rentals, and restaurants catering to visitors. Number 1. Bled, Slovenia Bled, located in the upper Carnolian region of southwestern Slovenia, is a picturesque town on the shores of Lake Bled. This town, renowned for its stunning scenery and popular with tourists from around the world, was first mentioned in written sources as Eldez in the year 1004 and as Valdez in 1011. The exact origin of the name Bled is unknown, but it's believed to predate Slavic influences. The German name Veldez may have been derived from Old Slovene, Beld, before AD 800, or from the same pre-Slavic source as the Sloven name. Situated at the southern foot of the Karawanks mountain range, Bled lies near the Austrian border about 31 miles northwest of Slovenia's capital. South of Lake Bled are the densely forested plateaus, as well as the easternmost parts of the Julian Alps. This area includes the Sava Bonjinka River and parallel Bonjinjin Railway, leading to the Bojin Basin, Lake Bojin, and the Triglav Massif. The lake itself is 1.3 miles long and half a mile wide. 
In the summer, the surface water of the lake warms up until autumn, making it suitable for swimming. During the colder winters, though, the lake freezes over, allowing for ice skating, and the island can be reached on foot. In the year 1004, King Henry II granted ownership of the area to the Bishop of Brixen in recognition of the church's support. In 1011, Henry II further extended this donation to include the castle and additional lands, which came to be known as the Lordship of Veldez. For the next 800 years, Bled remained under the control of the Prince Bishops of Brixen. Cut to nearly a thousand years later, and after the dissolution of Austria-Hungary in 1918, Bled became part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and served as a summer residence for the ruling house. This tradition continued under Yugoslav leader Josip Broz Tito, who built his residence there in 1947. By selling land along the eastern lakeshore to affluent individuals for their villas, these villages began to coalesce, and Bled was officially designated a town in 1960. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.